are on the eve of amazing, and to help me this morning understand, to help us understand this morning why we're on the eve of amazing, I'm going to ask all of our kids to come up here and sit down right here on this stage. Would you help me? All our kids, come on up here. Trust me, there's something in it for you, so you want to come on up. Officer Rea, would you please guard that for me? Guard it. Yes. Good morning. How you all doing this morning? Are you excited? Why would you be excited? What is it? It's Christmas Eve. It's Christmas Eve. You know, Christmas Eve is actually my favorite uh, my favorite day. Because, you know, you, you know, because you, you see all those like presents underneath the Christmas tree, right? And you're wondering what's in them and you're all excited, you're, right? Yes or no, huh? Yeah, you like Christmas Eve. Yeah, so do I. You know, we're on the eve of something truly amazing. I'm not so sure, though, that we actually understand what that means to be on the eve of amazing we're going to learn about that this morning. Would you like to do that this morning? Yes. I, I need, okay, now I need you to understand something here. If you volunteer for this, Hi, yeah. I'm really glad to know that mom and dad is out there because I'd hate to think that all these kids drove themselves Hi, to church today. Yeah, hello. All right, now I need, I need one, one person to volunteer to reach into a sack and pull out just one item. Now, there's a sack that I've got up here, and it's full of, well, it's full of all kinds of gifts. And so if you pull out, let's say, several, then I'm going to have to preach on every item that you pull out, and we're going to be here till like next week. So is there one person up here that could reach into a sack and pull out just one one thing, what do you think? Are, are, there's pressure here. Are, are you okay with that pressure? You think you can do that? Okay, step up here. Now, what's your name? Connor. Connor. Uh, what's your last name? Murphy. Connor Murphy. Are, is your mom or dad here or your grandma and grandpa? And they're away. Okay, they're there. Or now, now, there's real pressure. Do you feel this pressure? Connor, do you feel pressure? Pressure? Yeah, okay. Now, I'm going to ask you to reach in this sack and only pull out one thing. Everybody's hoping that you only pull out one thing. Just one thing. Oh, wow. You did it. Way to go. Did everybody see that? Hold it up way up high, Connor. What is that, Connor? A candy cane. It's a candy cane. Wow. Now, I'm going to take it away from you. Is that okay, Connor? Yeah, it is? Yeah. Uh, I'll give it back to you. It's okay. It's okay? All right. Go ahead and sit down there. And Officer Rhea, hold these for me, this bag. Stay out of it. I'm watching you. All right. Uh, thank you, Connor, for picking out this candy cane. You know, I, 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 don't you just love candy canes? Doesn't this just represent Christmas to you? How many of you have one of these on your tree or several of you? Have, have you already had some candy canes already? Yeah, you probably have. Yeah. Don't you just love candy canes? You know, they're kind of a symbol of Christmas, aren't they? When you think of candy canes, you think of Christmas, don't you? Now, th there's a lot that we're going to learn this morning from this, from this candy cane. Now, if I hold this candy cane like this, right? What, what, does that, what does that look like? J. What letter is that? A J. What is it? A J. A J. What do you think J stands for? What, what's that? What do you think it stands for? Jesus. 
It stands for Jesus. Everybody see that J? And the J stands for Jesus. Very good. Now, but if I turn it over like this, what does that, what does that look like? A what? Shepherd's staff. A shepherd's staff. All right, very good. It represents a shepherd's staff. So we can learn a lot about, about the candy cane or about the story of Christmas from, from this candy cane. Did you know that candy canes have been, what's that? Oh, okay, now, okay. Well, we, we can learn a lot about the candy cane, but let me just share a little bit of the history of the candy cane. Did you know that the candy cane has been around longer than your mom and dad, longer than your grandma and grandpa, your great-grandma and grandpa, your great-great-great-great-grandma and grandpa? In fact, the candy cane has been around more than 350 years. That's right. Uh, it's been used since 1670 to keep kids quiet in church. No kidding, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm living dangerously here, not, not giving you all one this morning. I'm sorry, but you can't have them yet, maybe, all right? Uh, you know, at first, they were made long, long ago. They were all made by hand, and originally, they were white. Uh, they were all white, and, and eventually, they put this, uh, this staff on the top of it. Originally, they were just sticks, candy sticks made out of out of sugar, yeah. And it was in about 1950, so let me see, maybe your grandparents, when your grandparents were born, they actually invented a machine that would make this candy cane. And so then they were able to make these for all the little boys and girls. Yeah, right? Isn't that cool? Do you know how the candy cane is made? Anybody know how it's made? I, I was surprised I didn't know how it was made. Did you know that it's mostly, it's mostly sugar, right? You knew that kind of yet. You like that, right? So it's mostly sugar. And what they did do is they put a lot of sugar and a lot of other stuff into a big kettle, and they heat it up, and it becomes almost like a, a, a molasses or like a, a, a taffy. How many, how many of you, you know, it's like really chewy? Now, this is hard, right? So I wonder how it gets from being a, a taffy to really hard. But anyway, they make it into this kind of like taffy, and they, then they begin to shake it up and stir it up, and guess what happens? That, that, that syrup becomes white as the air uh, gets all through this, uh, this taffy. And when, once it's that way, then they, they kind of wad it up into a big, a, a big log, all right? How about next slide there? Yeah, next slide. Yeah, and, and so they make it into this big log, and the log is like a foot around. Yeah, it's a big log. It, you like, see, like, go do like this. It's made into this huge log. And you know what? Have you ever noticed how candy canes are always different? Like you'll get, a, you'll get one with different kinds of stripes on it and everything. Do you know why that is? It's because a machine doesn't put the stripes on the candy cane. The, the stripes are actually put on there by hand. People will wrap it around the, this log, these stripes. They'll put, on, they'll put those on last. Then they'll put it into a machine, a special machine. And again, it's not been around that long. And they begin to roll that log until it gets uh, smaller and smaller and smaller. Next slide. And it gets smaller and smaller as it gets rolled, and the stripes begin to turn and turn and turn until finally it gets into about this size, and they cut it off, and they put, uh, they put the, the, the bend in it that represents Jesus and a shepherd's staff. Isn't that cool? And by the way, they put peppermint in the, can in the candy earlier, right, so it would taste like peppermint. Isn't that cool? Now you know a little bit of the history of the candy cane. Now, we, we talked about the fact that, that the, the J symbolizes Jesus, right? And the, 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 this part symbolizes the, the shepherd's staff. But what, does, what connection is there between Jesus and the, shep, uh, the shepherd's staff? Does anybody know? Is there any connection between Jesus and shepherds? 
no, no connection at all? In the Christmas story, can we remember, is there any story that connects the J and the staff? No. No? Are you sure? There's no, oh, there is? Somebody says yes? Is there? Yes. Do you know where it's found in the Bible? It's in the Gospel of Luke. That's right. Uh, the shepherds and Jesus have a connection. We're going to talk about that this morning. Now, let me see. I don't know. Would somebody like to read? Would somebody like to read for us? That's kind of a scary thing, I know. Anybody want to volunteer to read? All right. Well, how, how about I read for us, okay? Uh, it's found in Luke. And let me, let me share with us the connection between uh, Jesus and these shepherds. And you know this story. It's found in Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks of pigeons. Is that right? No? Oh, it's what? Oh, it is sheep. Yeah, actually, sheep is, yeah, it, you're absolutely right. It's not pigeons. Uh, yeah, they were keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. You know, I, I'm wondering, maybe we can help, you can help me the, this morning. I'm wondering why would God send angels to the shepherds? Does that make any sense to you guys at all? Why would God send his angels to tell shepherds good news? I mean, the shepherds, I, I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. The shepherds were not... They weren't the priests of the day. They weren't, the, they weren't the, uh, the wealthy of the day. They weren't even the, the intellectuals of the day. In fact, most of them probably didn't have uh, much more than the equivalent of maybe a, a grade school education. They were the common folks. In fact, they were the, the lowest class of, of Israel. Yeah, and so Jesus, God sends angels to tell the shepherds this good news. What was that good news? What was the good news? What was the good news? Somebody know that? What's the good news, Connor? It's Jesus has been born. Wow, wasn't that good news? Now, now, now why is that good news? That Jesus was born. Uh, Connor is so right. Why is that such good news? Well, I think the candy cane actually tells us why that was good news. Now, how many of you know your colors? Do most of you know your colors? You know your colors? So what colors, what colors are in this candy cane? Red, orange, green, no. What? Red, and what other color? White. White. That's very good. That's right. Red and white. And what do you reckon that these colors symbolize? Well, before we do that, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the shepherds, all right? Uh, what do shepherds keep watch over? Does anybody know? Uh, we kind of talked about that. Sheep. Sheep. That's right. They keep watch over sheep, not pigeons. It wasn't a flock of pigeons. It was a flock of sheep. That's right. So what else do we know? Let me see. Now, are sheep known to be a gentle or a mean animal? 
What do you think? Are sheep known to be gentle or are they known to be really mean? Gentle. They're a gentle animal, that's right. If you've ever been around sheep, you know that uh, they don't usually bite you or stomp on you or anything like that. Uh, okay, now here's a tough one. What were the sheep used for in, in the Bible? And what about Bethlehem sheep? And this is really important. What do you reckon the sheep were used for in the Bible times? Does anybody know? What is it? For trimming the grass, <laughs> kind of like the ancient lawnmower. Were they like the lawnmower? Yes. All right. Yeah, they were like an ancient lawnmower. That's exactly right. Yeah, that, that's just wonderful. We're going to stop now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sing our benediction here. All right. Yeah. 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 The, you know, not only did they keep the grass nice and trimmed, but they also served a very important purpose, and especially the sheep near Bethlehem. How far is Bethlehem from Jerusalem? Is it a long, long way, or is it really close, close by? Does anybody know? Yeah, Bethlehem from Jerusalem is just a few miles, and so Bethlehem sheep uh, were, 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 were raised for a specific purpose. Does anybody know what that was? This is a tough one. Sacrifices. Wow. Did you hear that? That was awesome. What's your name? Genesis. What? Genesis. Uh, no. What, what's your name? Genesis. Oh. <laughs> you know that's the first, you've probably heard that before. Genesis. Give this girl a hand. That was a tough question. Now we really can say amen and go home. <laughs> no, yeah, that's exactly right, uh, Genesis. That's exactly right. Uh, the, the, the sheep in Bethlehem uh, were, were raised for a purpose, and that was uh, to be used as a sacrifice. And every year at the Passover, these lambs, the one-year-old lambs, male lambs, would be taken to Jerusalem, and their uh, families would come, and they would purchase one, and they would offer that lamb as a sacrifice. Uh, and the Passover, of course, came as in the in the book of Exodus, uh, where the 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 lamb was used and the blood was used to put it on the doorpost, and it protected the family in the home. Yeah, it did. And so the sacrifice came in the Old Testament. And the lamb was the, uh, the sacrifice. Now, I know it, it's not very pleasant to talk about blood at Christmas, is it? No. no. Have any of you ever had an owie? Have any of you ever had, how many of you have ever had an owie like where you maybe fell off your bike and you skinned your knee or, or maybe you cut your finger or maybe you did what my daughter did once when she was little. She ran into a glass door like a window, <laughs> like face plant, right? right. Now she didn't bleed, but you know, it's just like, have any of you ever like seen your own blood? That, what happened? Do you know what happened when you fell? Did you fall down or something? Yeah. Did you cut your knee open or something like that? D did mom kiss it and put a Band-Aid on it and all that? How many of you have had an owie like that? Yeah, and do doesn't mom always make it feel better? No? <laughs> Genesis is saying no. Do we need to have a talk with your parents, Genesis, maybe? No, no yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, when, when we fall down, and next slide, please. When we fall down, uh, you know, it, it hurts, doesn't it? And sometimes we see our blood and, and it kind of scares us. But, you know, blood is not a scary thing. Do you know what, what God's purpose is for blood, no. for our blood? Our blood is actually what circulates all through our body. And it takes oxygen. Uh, it takes oxygen to our muscles so that we can run really fast. And also, it actually carries out the bad stuff in our body and, and so then it helps circulate that and get it out of our system so that uh, we can stay healthy and strong. And the blood in the Old Testament was used to save the people. 
It was the blood of the lamb that was used to, to save them. And so this red on the candy cane represents blood, the blood of, of the lamb. Let's go on to the next picture. Can you see that picture back there? I love this picture of this kid because he has an owie on his forehead, but you can kind of tell that he's going to go back and do it right. He's going to do it again. Whatever got him that owie, maybe riding the bike or whatever, you know he's going to get back on that bike, don't you? And so there's going to be more scratches, I think, to come. But we shouldn't be afraid of blood. In fact, uh, I think one of the reasons why the angels came to the shepherds is because the shepherds knew something that many of us forget. And that is that salvation only comes through what? Through the blood, isn't it? You're exactly right. And uh, the shepherds knew that, that blood actually saves lives. How many of your parents or grandparents have ever given blood? You know, it's a really cool thing. You can go in and they'll kind of put a needle in you, which really isn't scary. And, and they'll, they'll take your blood and they'll give it to people who really need it. And it's a really neat thing. Did you all know that you, you have a specific blood type? Every one of us has a, a blood type. And, and uh, so they'll match our blood type with other people. And it's not a scary thing. In fact, uh, it's, it's something that can save our lives. Did you know what, what was said of Jesus and why he's called the Messiah and why he's called our Savior? When the angels came to the shepherds, what did they say? We bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. Today in the city of David, the town of David, a what has been born? A what? Savior. Savior has been born. That's right. A Savior has been born. You know, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Did you know that? The first time he was introduced in the Gospel of John, he was called the Lamb of God. And do you know why that is? First Peter tells us it's by his stripes we have been healed. And then of Jesus, it said, uh, of him who's loved us and washed us from our sins, in his own blood. Jesus came to be born in Bethlehem, and his purpose for coming was so that his blood could wash away our sins. What does white represent? If red represents blood, what does white represent? What do you reckon it represents? Heaven. It re well, yes, it does. Uh, it represents heaven. Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, it represents even more than that, though. What else? What else do you think it represents? Skin. Skin? Okay, maybe. Okay. What else do you think it represents? What is white like? What does it represent, do you think? If we're white, it means we're going to heaven. We're pure, doesn't it? It represents purity. And, and when we think of... When we think of white, we think of how is it that our, our sins are washed away and we become white? This is an amazing thing. Because Jesus is the Lamb of God, it says, for those who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb makes us white. Now, uh, okay, Connor, you pick this out, all right? So I'm going to give it back to you, and I want you to only eat. Which color do you like the best, red or white? Okay, so I want you to only eat the red. You can't eat any of the white. I want you to do that. Do you think you can do that? Only eat the red. How's that going to happen? That's impossible, isn't it? It's impossible to separate the red from the what? Yeah, it's impossible to separate the red from the white. You know, and a lot of people at Christmas time, they try to do that, don't they? They try to separate the red from the white. They say, well, I'm good enough, I'm pure enough on my own. I don't need the blood of Jesus. I do a lot of good things. I'm a nice person. 
I mean, I try to treat people nicely, especially at Christmas time, unless there's only one toy left at the store and somebody else wants it besides me, and then we might fight over it just a little bit, a little bit, right? But at any rate, I try to treat people really nice, maybe at school. I try to treat people nicely. And so I'm good enough on my own. I don't need the red. But the Bible teaches us that it's the blood of Jesus that washes all of our sins away. Now, because we can't separate the red from the white, that's what the shepherds knew. Now, what is it that the shepherds do? Do we know what the shepherds do? Or what they did when they got the message from the angels? Tell, tell me what the when, the, when the shepherds got the message from the, the angels, does anybody know what they did? No. They don't, you don't know what they did? Well, let's read about it then. What did the shepherds do? All right. We find it in, in Luke chapter 2. And listen to this. It says, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph And the baby who was lying in the what? The manger. Very good. Now, so what did the shepherds do? They went to Bethlehem, didn't they? They went to Bethlehem to find baby Jesus. And then let's go on. What else did they do? When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Now, so what did the shepherds do? First, after the angels told them the good news, what did they do? They did what? They left to go see the thing that had happened. They left to go see the thing that had happened. What thing had happened? What thing had happened? The Savior had been born, and they found him in the manger, didn't they? But is that all that they did? They just went and saw the baby? Is that what they did? Isn't that why you came this morning to to experience, uh, you know, uh, the Savior, Jesus Christ, right? We came for that reason, didn't we? Yeah, but is that all they did? Is that all that the shepherds did? No, what else did the shepherds do? Somebody else, what else did the shepherds do besides go and see the baby? What did they do? Does anybody know? This is a little harder. Okay, Connor. Worshipped the baby. They did. They worshipped the baby. They went, they saw him, they worshipped baby Jesus, which is all... which is, should we do that too? Yes, we should. That's right. Uh, but what else did they do besides that? And this is so important. And many people miss this, especially at Christmas time. What did they do? The Bible also says that after they left, they did something. Did they keep that secret to themselves? No, they didn't keep the secret to themselves. What did they do? They went to spread the word about this thing that has happened. Say that again. They went to spread the word about this thing that has happened. They went and spread the word about this thing that had happened. That's exactly right. So the shepherds went and did what the angels started. Did you hear that? The shepherds continued what the angels had begun. Now, after after the and this is so important because you know what? We can be like the shepherds, can't we? We can tell others this good news of great joy, which is for all people. And then we read in the next verse, in verse 21, on the eighth day, or excuse me, uh, yeah, in verse 21, on the eighth day, uh, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. Do you know what Jesus means? You know, your name has a meaning. Maybe you've seen it on a card. 
Uh, do you know what your name means? You, I bet your parents had a reason for naming you Genesis, right? Genesis is the beginning, right? But anyway, our names mean something, and Jesus means something. Do you know what Jesus means? It's actually two words, and it's Lord saves. That's right. Jesus' name actually mean, means what he came to do, and that was to save us. You know, we have the opportunity on this eve of amazing to continue what the angels began and what the shepherds started. And what did they both do? The angels and the shepherds, what did they both do? They shared good news of great joy, which will be for who? For all people. And that news was of Jesus Christ, wasn't it? And so we have the opportunity to be God's angels. Now, does God still send angels to share the good news of great joy? Does God still do that today? There's a verse in the, in the, in the Bible that, that Jesus said, From the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise. Let me share a little story with you. My wife, Brenda, do you all know Miss Brenda? Most of you do, right? Most of you know. Uh, my wife grew up in a small town. How many of you grew up in a small town? Now, Livonia is not what I would consider a small town. In fact, there are as many people in this room almost as the town that my wife grew up in, in Brockton, Illinois. All right? Uh, there are no stoplights or anything. There is a railroad track that goes through, and there's a light there. But other than that, there are no traffic lights in this town. And so everybody knows everybody in this town. Now, my wife grew up there, and she went to the Christian church in Brockton. Across the street lives a, a couple named Rodney and Helen. Now, Helen has gone to church, and I've known her uh, since, I think, the first day I ever visited Brockton. But Brenda has known Rodney and Helen her whole life, her whole life. And you know what? Rodney... Uh, even though Helen has gone to church faithfully, she's just a wonderful servant of the Lord, Rodney, who's a farmer. But Rodney is not just a farmer. He is like the coolest of cool farmers. You want to know why he's so cool? How many of you know what a Clydesdale horse is? Do you know what a Clydesdale is? Those massive horses? Rodney raises Clydesdale horses and he has a wagon, and he'll go around taking kids on wagon rides with his Clydesdale horses every year. So cool, right? Well, you know what? Rodney has never gone to church. Many people have invited him to go to church, but uh, nobody, uh, he's so far, he never accepted not a single invite. Well, not long ago, next door to Rodney, this uh, new family moved in, and they immediately started going to church, and the kids, the little kids that lived there, they would go over and see what Rodney was doing every day. Like, if Rodney was outside, they would go and visit him, and if he was raking leaves or mowing the lawn or working in the garage, they would always go over and say, Rodney, what are you doing? Rodney, what are you doing? And you know what? Uh, they, had a, 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 they had a play at church. They had an event, and these little kids were a part of that event. And those little kids went over to Rodney's house, and they knocked on Rodney's door, and they said, Rodney, would you come to church with us next Sunday? Because we're in a performance, and we'd love, we'd love it if you came. And guess what? Rodney came to church for like the first time ever, all because somebody like you shared that good news about Jesus. Do you know what angel means? Angel means messenger of God. And we can be God's messengers and share that good news of great joy with all people. Now, I'm going to do something this morning as uh, we get ready to sing here. So as we get ready to sing, I want you to know that I'm going to send, I'm going to send two, two of these home with each of you. One is for you, and the other one 
is for you to share with somebody and tell them the story of the candy cane. And we think the eve of amazing means the eve of Christ's birth. But you know what? It can also mean the, the eve of sharing Jesus' love with somebody who doesn't know it. And we can, be the, we can be a part of sharing that good news of being God's angels in this world. Could you do that? Could you share this message of the candy cane with somebody? If I give you another one, Connor's got thumbs up. All right, awesome. Praise the Lord. All right, stay right here. We're going to stand and sing. And um, your kids are going to be coming back to you shortly, okay? <laughs> let's stand, let's sing.